Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss internuclear of thermoplegia. This is very important topic for exams like NEET PG or NEXT and even for INICET. I will try to simplify this complicated topic and also at last I will discuss some extra points for exams. So do watch full video for complete understanding. First of all, we must know basic anatomy for detailed understanding. We have certain extraocular muscles in eye including recti, obliques and levator palpebrae superioris. But here we are mainly concerned with horizontal movement of eye which is done by medial rectus and lateral rectus of each eye. Let us learn with the help of example. In order to look right, we must use lateral rectus of right side which will cause abduction of right eye and medial rectus of left eye which will cause adduction of left eye. The thing is, these both muscles are innervated by different cranial nerves. Lateral rectus is innervated by 6th cranial nerve that is abducens nerve and medial rectus by 3rd cranial nerve that is oculomotor nerve of the respective sides. The nucleus of 3rd nerve is situated in midbrain and nucleus of 6th nerve in pons. This is the basic anatomy. Now let us take our discussion forward. In order to avoid disturbance or double vision, movement to look right side in our example should occur together. That is, right LR should do abduction and left MR should do adduction at the same time. For that, 6th nerve nucleus is connected to contralateral 3rd nerve nucleus by something called as medial longitudinal fasciculus or MLF. It is heavily myelinated tract in brainstem. It is named so because it is located medially and is longitudinal structure. And this is how movement to right side occurs simultaneously by both eye. Now you may think from where does signal come? 6 now get signals from PPRF that is paramedian pontine reticular formation which receives signal from contralateral frontal eye field. Let me repeat it. If signal comes for looking at right, left frontal eye field will send the signal to right PPRF which will send signal to right 6 now nucleus and 6 now will stimulate lateral rectus of right side to look right that is abduction. At the same time, signal reaches left third nerve nucleus through MLF which will stimulate left MR or medial rectus to look at right that is adduction. The point to remember here is right sided 6 nerve is connected to left sided third nerve via left MLF and you can see in this figure. Now coming to our topic that is INO or internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Just imagine we have lesion in one sided MLF. Let us take an example that lesion is there in left sided MLF. When there is MLF lesion in left side, left sided third nerve cannot act that is left medial rectus is non-functional whose action is to adduct that is patient cannot look right from left eye. Therefore, there will be same sided adduction weakness. But right sided lateral rectus is function. So patient will be able to look right with the help of right eye. And also there will be dissociated horizontal abduction nystagmus on right eye. This is because of an adaptive increase in innervation of weak adductor. There is proportionate increase in innervation to the strong abductor which is manifest as nystagmus in right eye. Now suppose we have lesion in right MLF. If the patient is asked to look at center, this will be the position of his eyeballs. Now suppose we tell patient to look right. Both eyeballs will move right because right rectal rectus and left medial rectus both are normal. Now if you tell patient to look left, only left eyeball moves left. But right eyeball will remain at center because lesion in right MLF will cause adducting weakness in right eye. Therefore, in INO, there will be ipsilateral adduction weakness with contralateral nystagmus. Now coming to causes of INO. If a patient is child, suspect tumor. If the patient is young, the typical cause is demyelinating disease like multiple sclerosis. And in elderly patient, suspect stroke. Now how to differentiate whether lesion is in pons or midbrain. It is important to localize lesion because MLF is longitudinal structure which extends from midbrain to pons. The basic point you would have learned in physiology is for convergence third down nucleus is required. So if lesion is high in midbrain involving MLF which is likely to involve third now also, convergence is lost. And if lesion is in pons, convergence is intact as third now nucleus is not affected directly. Now coming to Webino syndrome, we already discussed INO, 
which everyone will study for exams like NEET PG, NEXT or INICET. And many questions already came from this. But for future exams and future questions, you must know extra points for certain important topic like this. In Webino syndrome, the lesion is in bilateral MLF. Here, both eyes will be slightly abducted because of bilateral adduction that is third nerve weakness, giving rise to appearance called as wall eyed. Hence the name Webino, that is wall eye bilateral internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Now coming to something called as one and half syndrome. In one and half syndrome, lesion is there in MLF and PPRF of one side. Let us take an example of right-sided lesion. That is right-sided MLF and PPRF are non-functional. As right MLF is involved, there will be right INO, that is right adduction weakness due to third nerve palsy. And right PPRF involvement which is stimulating right lateral rectus via sixth nerve and left medial rectus via left MLF and left third nerve nucleus. So structure involved will be ipsilateral medial rectus, ipsilateral rectus and contralateral medial rectus. That is ipsilateral and contralateral third now and ipsilateral sixth now and the only structure spread will be contralateral sixth now that is contralateral rectal rectus as i told only structure which is spread is contralateral sixth now that is contralateral rectal rectus therefore only possible movement will be contralateral eye abduction so in our example with lesion in right mlf and pprf patient left eye will be slightly abducted due to unopposed action of lateral rectus when there is attempt to look right, both eyeballs will appear in center. And lastly, when there is attempt to look left, only left eye abducts, as only left lateral rectus is functional. Now what is pseudo ino pseudo ino means when there is ino-like presentation, but there is no lesion in MLF, that is imaging or MRI is normal. And the most common cause is myasthenia gravis. There are some other rare cause also, like middle fissure syndrome. We already discussed one and a half syndrome, that is lesion in MLF and PPRF of one side. If there is lesion in MRF and PPRF of one side, plus there is lesion in ipsilateral seventh nerve palsy, it is called as eight and a half syndrome. And if it is bilateral seventh nerve palsy, along with one sided MLF and PPRF lesion, it is called as fifteen and a half syndrome. This eight and a half syndrome and fifteen and a half syndrome are not described in standard textbook, but there are certain articles in PubMed which I have referred. So there may be question on this. So friends this was all about this video. I have simplified this complicated topic as much as possible and explained it conceptually. Do share it among your friends and also like the video and subscribe our channel. And if you want any video for any specific topic, let us know in the comment section. Thank you.